Look, a bay is not to love. If you take the Pauline advice, we obey those in authority over us. And if we remind ourselves of the Jesus teaching, we do not love them and put them first. Mm. Does that mean I don't do small things for my employer that would help and benefit him? Let me try this for a moment. We may give in the marketplace what is required because the person we're trading with Um, is not in a loving relationship with us. It's a trading relationship. But I may come to know you and appreciate you and want to bless you. I mean, not to the exclusion of my own welfare, but I get a significant happiness in knowing that you've prospered and I'm willing to undergo some cost to have that. And this makes good loving relationship because if you are a thankful person, if, 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 if you are a person that appreciates notices benefit, values it. And you do likewise to me. Not give more than you gain, but give something that gives you a greater gain in happiness and knowing my welfare is improved. Do you see, we potentially are in a loving situation. If, on the other hand, I constantly do things for you that you do not appreciate, and literally do not appreciate, then there's no point in me doing them. And I just give you the bare essentials of what you do value, which may be the bare bones of the contract. And this is the problem of slavery, isn't it? That you get the absolute bare minimum out of the slave. You do get the bare minimum, but that's all. Whereas an employer that loves you because you love him, perhaps love is overdone here as a word, you know, an employer that does do things for you because he appreciates you over and above the contract. And if you appreciate it too, you also give to him over and above the contract. In each case, what costs you relatively little but is valued significantly then we're on a win-win situation. We have customer loyalty. We have uh, loyal employees. We have a good boss. And we've got a real serious problem. I go to the boss and say, I'm in difficulty. Ah, oh. look, mate, you take a couple of weeks off, sort things out at home your bereavement or whatever it is, problem in the family. And uh, I'll keep your job for you, don't worry. We don't want to lose you, you're a good man. Do you see? Simple, isn't it? And we know this, don't we? 
you as an employer get people around you who are invaluable, you can leave the business in their hands when you need to. In fact, in a sense, you're doing that all the time. And you can trust them. Wow. They're gold dust to you. <laughs> Aren't they? <laughs> if you appreciate it, if you don't, you lose them. They go somewhere where they will be appreciated. Do you see? And they'll give you just the bare bones of what you're appreciating. Nothing more. Because there's no point. Oh. I see. <laughs> so I don't mean a fantasy world where, you know, the boss comes in and says, well, you know, I've got the most wonderful staff here. And he's just buttering up and trying to encourage you to do more. I mean the genuine boss who you know in your heart you can go to and say, can you help? Oh, I see. Hmm, I'll see what we can do then. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. It's called goodwill, isn't it? And goodwill is nourished by genuine appreciation that responds by likewise giving back. Thank you, Dad.